Hey! It's a fun little song. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Good to see you guys there. Jack, hi. Captain T, welcome back. Brian, hello, hello. So today we have a super fun live stream with one of our content creators, Haley. And Haley is with us for a super special British Invasion episode. <gasps> yes. So Haley, how are you? Where are yes. you at right now? I'm good. I'm in Austin, Texas, while talking about Britain, which yeah. seems a bit backwards, but you know, it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm in Texas. I was in LA last weekend. I've been all over the place. But yeah, pretty good. Very excited. First live stream. Yeah. I've watched some of the other ones. It's very fun I'm to be part of time. it. Hello, hello. Hey, Jen. <laughs> cool. So um, when was the last time you were in England? I think you were there for a while, right? Yeah. I was just there in the fall, as we say, or the autumn, as autumn. they say over there. Yeah. They don't say fall. They just say autumn uh, for like three-ish months for friends, weddings and birthdays and just generally because I lived there for seven years yeah. and I still have an apartment full of stuff in storage just waiting for me to come back. Where um, were you at? Yes, in London? We are or... Texas and Oklahoma. We are very close. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are close. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was in London mostly. I went to Wales for a little bit. Ooh. Um, yeah, it's very um, nice. Wales is a beautiful country. Oh, um, yeah. And just sort of visiting and going back to see everybody, which is really, really nice. Yeah. It I, is much warmer here, though. The weather is. Tough. I believe that. Also, Texas is like even warmer than Oklahoma. Like we've had really nice weather, but yeah. Texas I is mean, always a little nicer. <laughs> I was. Oh, Cats are going crazy. I was sunbathing about three weeks ago. Yeah. It was like mid-November and I got sunburned. It well, was, yeah, was like weird. yesterday, the day before, it was like, no, it wasn't yesterday, two days ago here. I was like wearing short sleeves and shorts yeah. outside. Oh, yeah. December. Yeah. I Not was wearing jeans enough. the other day <laughs> at work and was sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Regretted wearing jeans. Yeah. But, you know. I love it though. I'd rather That's take good. that than the winter, but um, yeah. So in case you guys uh, don't know what this live stream is about, this is going to be a super fun one where we quiz you, we quiz each other all about British versus American English in terms of language and culture and yeah, experiences and everything like that. Ah, uh, yes. Jen says it's cool how you can switch back between an American and British accent so quickly. Between being an actor and being an actor in England, it's uh, it kind of comes with the job. I mean, I was just saying, if, if you talk to my British friends, they'd all probably have a good giggle and be like, oh, that silly Haley thinking she could do an English accent. Um, <laughs> and everyone else in the world is like, it's perfect. It's brilliant. Uh, it it yeah. really, you could fool me. Do you do that to people wow. ever? Do you oh, pretend yeah. Oh, my British? God. It's my very favorite thing to do. When I oh. used to live in New York City and we'd, like, go to bars or whatever, I'd go order drinks, uh, start the night out British, order drinks, and then after the first couple drinks, when I'd forget, go back and order round <laughs> three or four, and I'd forget that I was pretending to be British, and I'd go up and I'd order it in an American accent, and they'd be like... Wait, what? <laughs> it was, like, a full-on... Uh, oh, what was that? Oh, the movie with... Lindsay Lohan, when she played twins, one was British. Oh, one the was parent, parent trap. Parent yeah. trap. Yeah, it was a, like a yeah. like a very parent trap moment. Oh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> Still water. Oh, okay. So Captain T, this is what we're talking about right now. So mm -hmm. Still Water is in Oklahoma, and it's like an hour and a half away from Tulsa. That's where. So there's two main universities in Oklahoma. There's University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University. Oklahoma State University is in Stillwater, and that's where my sister went to college. But I went to the better school. But but yeah, Stillwater. You're right, Captain T. Was it a good movie? Did you like it? Is it new? I think it came out not long ago. I heard about it. Oh, Matt Damon. Yeah, I think Great it's like guy. action. I don't know. Is it an action movie, Captain T? 
it feels like it's an action movie. So I don't really watch those so much. It's too much stress. <laughs> oh, heart pounding. Yeah. So, okay, guys. So maybe, like we always say at the beginning of the live streams, um, yeah, Tulsa is where Chandler being moved to. <laughs> It that's is. such a brilliant it that's such a boring as really a pull. That's what I always get, but really it is I can't blame them. Everybody from Tulsa can't blame them for like making fun of it cuz it's you know it's not New York City. But um <clears throat> so anyways guys, if you want to grab like a pen and paper or something to write with, we're not doing any grammar or anything like that. Um, but you might learn some interesting idioms and words that will be useful yes. for later. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, oh, are you? So, Jack is a Friends nerd. Yeah. I like Friends. Do you watch Friends? I I did. My, and I was actually just about to say this, my European friends mm -hmm. are much bigger Friends nerds than any of my american friends ever were yeah and I, same I and west wing friends and west wing were so much bigger west i mean wing, everybody in the u.s is like yeah we've seen it we've watched it i know it like i can you know do the janice laugh or whatever oh, but God. like i can't tell you how many times a day friends or the west wing gets quoted That's when i'm so in the uk amazing. at least at least two or three times almost on the daily huh. very random I don't know. In Germany, I feel like a lot of people like Friends, but West Wing, I haven't heard much about that one. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. famously, if you are a nerd like me, um, the one guy in BTS, the K-pop band that speaks uh -huh. English, famously learned English by watching Friends when he was a kid. Like he tells a story about yeah. watching Friends with the subtitles on yes. in yeah. Korean and then in English and then learning it over the years. So That's a great quote, way. Me and, me and Brian friend. actually just made a video where we talked about this. Um, and you can find that on our YouTube channel. All right. Yes, <laughs> Captain T. Kim Nam Jun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, <laughs> watching shows and stuff with subtitles is like one of the Brilliant. best ways to learn another language. 100%. Mm -hmm. I learned so much mm -hmm. German from, from doing that and then listening to music and like concentrating on the, the lyrics and everything like yeah. that. Um, what would be maybe a good show that, sorry to put you on the spot here. Yeah. What would maybe be a good show for people learning English that want to get some exposure to British English? British um, English. What could you recommend? Um, I would say, so it's an old, it's an older show since mm -hmm. we're on a friend's vibe. Mm -hmm. It's an older show, but it's one of my very favorites. It's sort of a, a British, it's not really the same as friends, but it's a similar type vibe called coupling from oh, the sort of early, that. do you know Coupling? I've never seen Brilliant. it, but I know it. Okay. I love it so much. Okay. More than friends. More than friends. Maybe. Uh, um, but any, also, that. it's, I know, sorry, sorry. Um, then, yeah, so Coupling is a really good one and it's not very long. Okay. Uh, or you can do things like, um, like Black Mirror are yeah. brilliant shows and a lot of people mm. have seen those. And Black Mirror, because it's sort of sci-fi, you'll you hear words that you don't necessarily hear any yeah. in other places but that are still like helpful to know yeah um cool. that kind of stuff and the episodes are pretty short too and, and for most Black of Mirror? them right? and they're well they're contained they're self-contained yeah. they're like an hour long each but they're single it's not like you don't have to watch there's not eight. yeah yeah so if there's an episode that you go ooh, this is like particularly scary or weird then you can just skip that one yeah, yeah. black mirror is brilliant and it's also just very well made show. Yeah. Um, I want them to or, come out. Oh, they will. Don't when? worry. When? I mean, when? we'll probably do an, we'll probably end up doing an American remake of all the same episodes. Yeah. That's what we do. With that's American what television. we do. Oh God. I know. I um, feel like so many things are just repeats now. Skins is also another really good show, sort of for a slightly younger demographic. They had okay, three so it's like seasons. a young adult show. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's it's um it deal it's yeah young adult show and has way more regional accents, which is a a big thing in Britain, which we'll talk about later. Is it's a tiny country that yeah. has so many and really different yeah. accents. Like the difference between a 
a London and a Yorkshire accent. Yeah. A Scottish and a Welsh accent, even though that's technically not England, it's Britain, but still. Um, <laughs> is massive considering yeah. it's the size of California, but pretty much all Californians sound like the me. same. Yeah. So do you think so, that it's the accents are so different in the UK because the villages and stuff that people came from were established so long ago and they just stayed kind of where they were? Yeah, there's there's a bit of that. Um, and there's also because there's there's a lot of like pride in where you come from in the mm -hmm. UK uh, because it's really easy to get from one place to another. I feel like in the United States, there are really big cities and then nothing. And yeah. another really so like each state has one maybe two really big city yeah and you either live in that city or you don't and if yeah. you want to live in another state chances are you move to another state right. to the big city the city whereas in the uk you know the farthest it is is a what five hour train ride from one tip to the other oh, which is what? a long train it's the it's shorter than california i didn't realize uh, that it was so yeah. wow crazy that's not big. So it's easy to go do a day if, uh, you know, I mean, it'd be, it'd be a long train ride, but if you were in York and you wanted to go to London for the day or the weekend, it's way easier to do that than go yeah. to New York for the weekend from California. No. Um, so I think that there's a, a lot of people tend to sort of stay near where they're from. So there's a lot of the same sort of accents around you and you grow up hearing people hearing speaking the same. Um, which is why they've they've kept they've kept those Frankenstein who Frankenstein Chronicles I don't even know that one is that a new is that new oh. I I just love sci-fi so anything anything I've that, never uh, heard of this either is it scary probably <gasps> I want scary stuff I, scary I know stuff. I really hope it is something about is it about like Frankenstein and the monster I certainly hope so that sounds that sounds good. Yeah, I'm 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 looking that up as soon as we're done with this. I yes. need a new TV show. There's, Me too. Yeah. I don't, but I do. England, eh. England does make very good and really good movies as well. Yeah. There are a lot of good movies um, to watch with the British accents and stuff. I mean, James Bond, Harry Potter, yeah, any of those. There's a lot. Yeah, and so you act. Mm -hmm. You know, is it only theater, or do you also? act in like little movies or TV shows or? I personally don't, haven't done film type stuff other than like these, Hey Ling, yeah. what's up? Uh, I, I have mainly been a, a live performance theater person. Um, it's a different, doing film and TV, doing anything on camera is a totally different skill set that I just, I just yeah. haven't learned yet. I'd be interested, um, but it's it's a it's just sort of it's a different thing. Yes. Yeah. Sasha, I don't know how to pin a thing. Sasha, D D in English is another brilliant way. Playing D D is another fabulous way to to learn a language. Yeah. Oh, no, I and my husband that. says he learned English from playing video games because they chat on the thing. And mm -hmm. he yeah. most of and his have to Yeah, yeah. it's I would Totally, totally, totally recommend that. Maybe we'll, maybe that's the next big step after live streams. We'll figure out how to do like a Lingoni English D and D so campaign. Cool. <gasps> that would be really uh, fun. We should maybe try and I'll figure DM out it. some way I'll to get that it. going. Would you guys? Okay, tell us in the comments if you guys would like to do, even if it's not D and D, but some hey, interactive it's... game somehow. We, we have yeah, no idea how it would work, but the idea is pretty cool. Uh, there's some kind of, uh, something on Twitch or not probably not Twitch, but it'd be, we could probably on Steam or there are ways yeah. to do group sure. video, group gaming online would be, could be very fun. That would be Among so Us. Cool. Oh my God, Lingoni, a Lingoni Among Us. Could you imagine? Yeah. This is well, British. <laughs> We've gone off piece. Day, maybe we'll figure it out. Also, uh, I think uh, Jack had a question. Jack had a question. Yeah. So I, I learned, so I was in England, I was in Britain for seven years, um, and I was a bit of a Anglophile, which is a fun word to mean that um, I, I was interested in sort of English culture, uh, watched a lot of English television growing up and that kind of stuff. So when I, I moved 
over there for drama school. I could already kind of do a British accent just from listening to it and sort of teaching myself. And, and I had already been to one conservatory for theater and we worked on dialects there somewhat, um, mainly sort of theatrical dialects. And then, which dialect, by the way, is another word for accent, yeah. interchangeable, if you didn't yeah. know. Um, and so, yeah, moving to the UK, it, wanting to be an actor in England, it just sort of made sense to be able to do an English accent. I had to kind of work on it more so that I, I could be considered for more gigs. Yeah. So you just kind of, and also being around it, because I'm a musician as well, so like, anyone else if anyone else plays music or sings or anything like you know your ear picks up on differences in like cadence and rhythm and different sound intonation and and it helps that way yeah too. I think Brian is also like he he did singing a lot when he was younger mm -hmm. and he like has that you know like the he can hear he's really good with pronunciation stuff for example because mm -hmm. he his ears like trained to hear these little things. And yeah. me, for example, I'm like, what? <laughs> huh? Cause I just don't have any of that background, but, um, Oh, another yeah, question for thing. you. What kind of music do you do? Oh. oh, uh, well, so I started and still do musical theater. Um, so that's a way of doing singing and acting at the same time, which, yeah, it's like things. a perfect combination. Uh, it's great. Uh, I actually don't do all that. Oh, yes, Mighty Boosh. Oh, Sasha, we should be friends. <laughs> Mighty Boosh is a brilliant television show and Great British Bake Off, sticking with the Noel Fielding. Love that. Love that. Brilliant show. Uh, anyway, where was I? I've already Music. lost. Musical theater. Music. Music. <laughs> Started in musical theater, yeah. still do some musical theater. I've done some opera. And then moved on and do kind of anything really. Like one of my last jobs, I worked at the company called Secret Cinema uh -huh. in the UK that has just done a show in LA actually for the TV Ooh. show Arcane on Netflix, which was very good. I saw it when I was in LA. Very good. Good job, guys. Okay. Um, and mm -hmm. so when I was doing shows with them, one of the things that they would hire me to do, like one of my characters was always some kind of a singer. And in one of them I played, we did the movie Blade Runner. And so I was playing a replicant, which is basically a robot person. And they were like, right, so we need you to sing pretty much inhumanely. We need you to sing more than human. We need you, it needs to be like, this per This is a being that was made to sing. Have fun. Uh, and so I did oh everything God. from, I did like a, a Hindi rag, like a traditional Hindi singing style. I did an, um, a Mozart aria. I sang some Eurythmics. I sang a little Whitney Houston. Uh, I did <laughs> a jazz song. Oh my I God. did. Yeah. So I kind of, uh, I, I've always kind of sung a little bit of everything, but that really kind of solidified me going, right. I need to be able to sing everything for this particular yeah. show. So. It was really, That's it was really cool, fun, though. hard, but your job really sounds so cool. interesting. Yeah. So I mean, when you're crazy, in, but when you're brilliant. in Texas, do you act mm -hmm. there too? Or is it like kind of your time just to focus on other things? Uh, so during the last two years now, live performance, not really great, not really mm -hmm. happening, yeah. you know, which is the reason I had to leave the UK. I no arts jobs meant no arts visas. So I couldn't stay. So I had to come back to the U.S. So I know, sad face. Yeah. I know, but it is what it is. Um, is your plan so to go back I, there? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm lining everything up to end up back there in the new year once the world hopefully gets better soon. Yeah, fingers Ooh, crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, but so yeah. So since being in Texas, I I have not done performing because there isn't much. Yeah. There also isn't very much live theater in the U.S. If you're not yeah. in New York City. Yeah, it's not as culturally a thing here, I feel like. No, like no. It is, it's, but it's not. It's just New York. Like, it, it theater culture in New York, in, which is another thing I have to talk about later, actually. It's a Ooh. nice little preview for you guys. Yeah. The difference between sort of arts culture mm -hmm. in general in the U.S. Yeah. versus the U.K. And in the U.S., different cities have are different 
artistic cultural hubs. Yeah. Um, but then in the UK, every city has its own, has, is, is its own little cultural hub, has a regional theater, has some kind of contemporary or has some kind of museum, whether it be contemporary or traditional classical art, has some form of music scene, usually a different kind of music. Um, yeah, it's just sort of different. Yeah. Again, because yeah. it's, it's so easy to go from city to city, like you don't have to all congregate in just in one, one. Yeah. Because it's so far to get to another one. Like it's, you can live in London and do a show in Leeds. Like that was yeah. my first professional gig I auditioned for in London and then went up to Leeds for a little bit and then came back to London when I didn't have shows because it was easier. Yeah. yeah. America's Frankenstein it's a little too big. Oh, it has um, Sean Bean in it. Julia's just responded with Frankenstein Chronicles is, uh, yeah. So Cockney is another thing that we can we can talk about later if people have questions about. Mm -hmm. I was, we're gonna talk some about the different British accents. Cockney is a hard one. Good on you, Julia, for listening and figuring that out. Um, Ned Stark is played by a man named uh, Sean Bean who is from the North, which is why everybody oh. from the North and Game of Thrones sounds like they're from the North of England. I um, love it already. I'm so excited for this live stream. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Also, hi, Brian. Hi, Ryan. We miss you. Okay, so then should we start talking about British stuff? I mean, we kind of already have. That's true. If well you guys have way. any questions for Haley, too, ask him in the chat. Like, this is the time. So, yeah. okay. We're here. First things first. Mm -hmm. Is there any interesting theater vocab you could shed some light on for us because I don't know much about it. Yes. Yeah. Um, back on the sort of theatrical world, we have a handful of things that also are different in the U S versus the UK. The biggest one I learned, which took a little bit of time is um, there's a phrase. So like when we talk about sheet music, mm -hmm. sheet music is literally music on the page. So when you're like playing piano or singing and you have, you know, the staves with the different, with the notes on it and stuff in the UK, they call that the dots, the like dots, dots, the dots, D O T S on a page. So like I was in, I was in a, a, a show and someone, we were learning music and it was choral. So they were just singing. We were just singing and someone asked, was like, have you, have you got the dots for this? I was like, the what? <laughs> Excuse me? They were like, the, you know, the dots, the pages, the sheet music. And I was like, no, but that's brilliant. And I love it. And I'm using it. Yeah. So I'm trying to get the dots happening in the U.S. theater uh, scene. Because it's I my like all-time it. favorite. Cute. And then um, after you have the dots on page, whether mm -hmm. you need them or not, um, you are then, you when you learn something and it's memorized, which actually this is a theater term, but can be used in a lot of ways. Um, you say you are off book. As in, like, you oh. don't need your book anymore, You're but the book. script yeah. or the music. So being off book just means being memorized. Yeah, everything's um, prepared, memorized. Yeah, okay. and that's awesome. that's a phrase that I, I think both sides of the pond use mostly in theater, but, but also if you say to someone, yeah, you're off book for your presentation, for example, it, mm -hmm. like at work, they would know what that means. Okay. Um, and then the hardest one is learning. It's the first thing you learn in like children's theater school is stage right and left oh, yes. versus audience right and left. Very confusing. Which is very confusing. So when you're like, so stage right and left, you'd think, yeah, it's stage right, stage left, which so when you're standing on stage looking out at the audience, yeah. it's your right and left. But then that means when you're a director and you're sat out in the audience, you're yeah. having to yell somebody, okay, go stage right and point off to the left. I actually don't know which way yeah. to point out to you guys, but that just adds to it. Uh, yeah. So that was always, I always have to go, I have to like imagine myself yeah, standing like, at the back of the stage going right which way is. Uh, and then upstage is to the back towards the wall and downstage is towards the, the towards the audience because theaters used to be what's called raked, R-A-K-E-D. Uh. So they were so that um, the audience, if everybody was standing on the ground at the same level, you could mm -hmm. see up at the back 
of the stage and because they were higher up than the people. So they were upstage and the people closer to the audience were downstage. And then they figured out well, that, that yeah, it's just going the opposite The audience way. can, yeah, yeah, the audience <laughs> is now raked. Um, yeah, that makes so. more sense. Probably easier for the actors yeah. not sliding yeah. and falling down. Oh my God, I've done a couple shows raked and doing oh. like a musical on a raked stage, tap dancing in heels on a raked stage is um, not fun. Oh, here's the first cat. Oh, here's hello. one. There are three cats that will probably come say hello at some point. Hello. It looks like, like one of the cats we have here. Oh, okay, honey. Mama. You are very beautiful, but I'm going to move you. Say bye, kitty. <laughs> come up. Meow, 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 meow. Bye, bye. That's <laughs> so cute. By the way, hi, Uta. Hi. hi. But it's so, uh, uh, yeah, so those are my Ray those Kate, are my like favorite theaters. R A K E D. Mm -hmm. I cool. don't actually I know, know where that. that term came from. Yeah. Yeah. So a raked stage, and now they do a raked audience. Delicious. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. There will be dogs too, Jen. Probably. So yeah. Showing up somewhere. There will be dogs on all ends. Both Wait, sides. we both have three dogs and three cats in our houses right now. Mm hmm. So between Full us, we've got six dogs and six cats. We're going to have multiple appearances, I would imagine. Yeah. It's going to be a fluffy, <laughs> fluffy live stream. Yes. Oh my gosh. Cute though. I love that. Yeah. yeah pretty fun. Okay. Uh -huh. So I want to learn more British stuff. Okay. I want to learn. Do that. Like, I want you to quiz me and the, the, the audience on okay. some British words. Ooh. Okay. We could do that. Okay. We could do that. Uh, okay, I have to preface this by saying my grandpa immigrated from Scotland when he okay. was like in his twenties, so you and you he, may know some of these. I may know some of these. He never lost his accent. He was always saying weird stuff, right. and so I might have a little bit of an edge. But okay, hit me. Okay, start start Maybe off easier okay. and make it. We'll perfect. start off. We'll start off easy. Okay. okay. Uh, also, some of these, like you guys in the chat, may have heard from. If we're talking about you know British TV and movies, you will definitely have heard some of these. Um, so starting off easy. It's a word that we actually also use in the U.S. Not as often. Um, rubbish. Uh -huh. R U B B I S H. Rubbish. Okay. I know what this word. one is, but I want to wait yeah. and see if, if anybody, anybody else knows that. this one. Yeah. Um, a little hint, if you need it, is um, there is something called a rubbish bin. And you can also just say the bin if you need to. Yeah. A couple of people got it. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. So it's we say we say rubbish in the US as well, but not really as not really as much. It's like a word that people know, but yeah. we don't use it to say trash. And in the UK, people use it to literally physically mean like, here's a bit of rubbish, I'm gonna throw it in the bin. But they can also say that something is like, oh, I've been sick all week. I feel like absolute rubbish. Yeah. Whereas like I don't think we don't really say like, oh, I feel trash. No, as much. I, I, don't I do feel, know oh, that. I feel like garbage. We can, we yeah, can garbage. say, I feel like garbage in the U.S. Definitely. I feel like garbage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes yeah. people in the U.S., I would say, would call things rubbish. Maybe. Yeah. Well, this also true. might be the influence of my grandpa. Yeah. Like being exactly. like, she, that was utter rubbish. Like, that was rubbish. Don't yeah. listen to her. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Don't listen to her. Like, she's talking rubbish, I think, is maybe yeah. more of a, like, yeah. what she's saying is, don't listen yeah. to her. But not not as it's definitely not as much of a thing and i um a little side note on that i had a f great time learning uh when you go over there you can't just say hey here's some garbage where's the rubbish because they'll just point to what's in your hand because like, in that. the us we have a garbage <laughs> can or a trash can but we don't ask where the can is no else. That is we ask different. where the where the garbage is or where the trash is but in the yeah. uk it's the rubbish bin but instead of asking where the rubbish is you ask where the bin is so that's yeah. always that's i still do that i'll still be like oh right where's the rubbish and i'd be and like, like you're literally bin. holding it <laughs> also you that need the bin a good thought i've never really considered is if you said where's the can it just sounds yeah. like you're asking in a really impolite way where the toilet is toilet is yeah so be careful of that you guys uh yes. don't, don't yes. ask where the can is in america unless when in doubt when in doubt just say the whole thing. rubbish bin or trash or garbage can. can. Yeah. Just Definitely. when in doubt, do say the whole thing. Everybody will know what you mean. Um, 
Okay, okay, here's another one. Okay. Uh, it's, you probably will also know because it gets used a lot in television. Okay. Um, what is a lift? Aha, uh-huh. I know what a lift is. Because to I... lift is obviously yeah. a verb in both, both places, to lift. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lift is not actually a word. We don't have a lift noun mm-hmm. in America. Yeah, so get Captain it, D. Get D on it. Get it. Very good. Um, because it lifts you up. Um, but yeah, we don't we don't have lift as a noun in America in any way. No. I don't think. Do we? The lift. Maybe like a ski lift. Is that a thing? We call yeah, it. Yeah, but you wouldn't lift? you would yeah. Yeah, but I think you'd call it a ski lift. I don't yeah, think you'd have to have I mean, ski. It's a, it's a lift ticket to go on the ski lift. Yeah. It's also That's very, the only thing I can very specific. Of. Yes. Yeah. Whereas lift okay. is a very ubiquitous word in the UK. So if okay. I'm in England okay. and I need to find the elevator, I say, where's the lift? Or where's the lift? You, I shouldn't do that. Good. <laughs> no, that's not bad, actually. Um, yeah, you can, you can say elevator. You can say they, they know what an elevator is as well, obviously. But yeah. like they, they'll go, well, you're very American. Yeah. Um, because it's not like a Brit talking to another Brit will always say lift. Oh, okay. I don't know if you can hear my dogs. They're going crazy outside. Oh. Uh, okay, next one is one of my okay. favorite words. Okay. Um, do you know what a lorry is? L-O-R-R-Y. Lorry. I've heard it. There's one outside right now, which my dogs are all barking at as a hint. Is it like... Uh-huh. Have to teach yeah. On it. Truck. Yeah. Okay. A truck, but like a very specific, not like a truck that... You drive, not like a pickup truck. Like we're in the States, there are pickup trucks galore, yeah. probably in Oklahoma. There are Especially in Oklahoma and Texas, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so many, but it's not a pickup lorry. Like a, a lorry is a is like a professional stand, like like um like a when you drive cross country taking those big okay. metal canisters full of stuff. That's okay. A lorry. So it's like a Semi truck or like or a moving it's a moving truck would be a yeah, would be a, a lorry. Red and lorry, what, yellow lorry. Yep. That's what a do you call horrible, horrible tongue twister? This is a this is a Brit American dialect or American <laughs> word choice question. <laughs> what do you call those big trucks that there's like multiple different ways? Me and Brian. Oh yeah, call them yeah, there are. They're what big, do you call it's them? Either an 18, it's either an 18 wheeler or a semi, right? Yeah. Well, also those he calls the them Mack trucks. Oh yeah, no, what? he's weird and from New England. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what is that? Yeah, no, he's he's sorry, Brian. I love you. That's a weird New England thing. Yeah, most most of the country will either call him a semi or an eighteen wheeler. Yeah, I call them semi trucks. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know why, because they're definitely full trucks. They're massive. Yeah, they're not semi anything. It's <laughs> they're not. They're there's weird. nothing semi about a giant giant truck on the freeway. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Weird. But so, yeah, that would be a lorry in England. Okay. Um, and, and now another one that I love. It's a, uh, an interesting one because it's actually not a single word. It, when you say it, it's a single word, but it doesn't represent okay. just a single word. Cuppa. C-U-P-P-A. Cuppa. Not a word that you normally write. Usually a word that you say. I know this one. You want a cuppa? Cuppa. Ooh, a cuppa sounds <laughs> nice. Ah, do you mm-hmm. have a cuppa there? Mm-hmm. This is do indeed a little. Oh, it's a bit cold. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't, it shouldn't <laughs> I be purposely made that. cold coffee this morning. That was so smart. Look problem. at you. But you don't want to like a cold. Well, I guess you could have. It'd be diff- very different. Yeah. There. Good job, Jen. Jen got it. Yeah. yeah. Jen got it. So it's it's a it, it's a shortened it's a shortened one. Like it's for a cup of tea um, mm-hmm. instead of. Being, instead of saying, would you like a cup of tea with Shakespeare? Every, would you like a cup? Uh, everybody in England knows that you're going to finish that fen- sentence off with tea. Yeah. That's so right. tea is like way okay. more popular than Cuppa. coffee, right? Um, depending. Uh, it's more traditional. Like everybody, everybody drinks tea pretty much. Mm-hmm. Not Coffee is more po- getting more popular. And there are some like, pretty there are coffee shops that I'm sure if anybody here is in Europe you probably know like Costa and Pret and all that yeah. um and they they obviously do coffees uh but yeah tea is like a super traditional like 
you know you're friends with someone when they know how you take your tea. Yeah. Like all of my best friends in England, when they come over, the first thing you, you offer a cup of tea when someone walks in your house. Yeah. Walk in. If they're going to be there for more than 10 minutes, you offer them a cup of tea. And so wait, you how do you them, take your tea? I take my tea um, with a tiny dash of uh, oat milk or uh -huh. non-dairy milk um, and no sugar. Okay. Or just if they don't have non-dairy milk, then just black. But okay. that's weird. Most people put most people put sugar. Uh, yeah, and, I do milk and sugar in mine. But that's yeah, how most, most people do. But You're not very many people in the states do that. Because my mom no, well, would do it because my grandpa. And yeah. so growing up, I always well, had. Many, yeah, most people in the states when they think tea, they think iced tea. Iced tea, especially where we're from in the states too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and very very sweet. Lots yeah. of sugar. Oh. Ooh, yeah. Sweet tea. Sweet tea is a thing. Uh, sweet tea but yeah. Sweet tea. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so yeah, tea, tea is very, very important to British culture, uh, which is great. I love it because I love tea. I like tea better than coffee, personally. Um, I like them both. I can't, I can't choose. If I had to choose, I yeah. guess I would choose coffee, but tea's close. Mm -hmm. tea's, tea's quite wonderful. Uh, but so, yeah, so you, you offer someone a, a cuppa when they come in, which is a nice little, just a little thing. Um, okay, next one. This is another one. The bog or bog roll. Bog roll? B-O-G, bog roll. B-O-G, roll, R-O-L-L. -L. And Ooh. like a little hint for that is the bog is a um, thing. No, a thing, a place. Oh. Bog roll is a thing one would have or use in the bog. Don't mind me. I'm just off to the bog. Be right back. It's the toilet paper roll. Is it? Mm -hmm. Ah! Mm -hmm. Bog roll or loo, loo is another word that they use. Um, loo is a little bit more L-O-O. -O. Loo is a little bit more common, but bog is real fun. But so they, yeah, so loo is the bathroom and bog okay. is the bathroom. And the bog is um, the bathroom, but it's kind of slang. They're, or could you say it to yeah, like a yeah, yeah, yeah. or something? You could say Lou to a professor. Okay. Um, but I don't think if you're if you're in a lecture at university and go, pardon me, sir, can I go out the bog? I don't think, okay. I don't think you'd do that. But you could say, about, oh, man, it to the Lou. Do and little kids use totally bog? Normal. Or is that like? Mm, no, bog, bog is a little bit, it's a little more old fashioned. In fact, okay. somebody brought up earlier about Cockney. Mm -hmm. Bog is sort of a, is sort of a Cockney, I think of, older gentleman using the bog but oh, bog roll yeah. gets used more than like you'd go to the loo but you ask hey we're out of bog roll or loo that you'd say no. loo roll but you're more likely to use the term bog roll than the bog cool yeah, it's a weird one yeah that's uh, don't know where that's it came from cool yeah but it's just a fun word um okay here's one that as an american will make you laugh a little bit as oh our other anyone else will be a little bit. If you're in England uh, and you ask someone for a rubber, what do you think you're going to get? <gasps> oh, <laughs> I know. In America, one. yeah, because in America, it means something different. You would use that. You would use that sort of slang term for something. Yeah. Very different than you would in England. I know and that's one that I found. Yeah, that yeah. I brought this one in because it was it was a it was a moment. The first it, time someone asked if I had a rubber, and I was like, "Why? <laughs> why? Why do you need this? Is I something mean, good, I'm but unaware why? of? I mean, like you're great. You're I like you a lot, but like we're literally like in doing school. homework. We're in school. <laughs> it's not the time. Oh, yeah, God, Jen, so Jen's got it. Okay, yeah, yes, it. it's an eraser. But because yeah. I think in German, it also translates to rubber, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have I mean, the same connotation. Sense. No, it's, that's, yeah, American connotation is something very different. Yeah, very, American very connotation, I guess we should just, like, say what that is. Yeah, we're all, it's a hopefully all adults here. slang word for, like, a condom. Yeah. So if someone says, like, do you have a rubber, they're asking for a condom. In the UK, yeah. they're asking for an eraser. Eraser. <laughs> Very different. So it thing. makes much more sense when asked for a rubber in the library in England, <laughs> as I learned at drama school. 
Oh my god, that's so. Anyway, good. anyway, this is this next one is fun. Um, oh, gummy! I like gummy. Yeah, that's cute in German. Gummy. Um, <laughs> gummy. This next one is. I'm not. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna see if you know. Okay. What's a tune? C H O O N. It sounds like. Oh, I thought you were saying tune with the British accent. C H O O N. <gasps> is it a tune? That's right. It's what? a tune. Yeah, it's a song. A tune? So a song. Oh, I love this ah. tune. Because, but then they spell it phonetically. So they spell it because they have um, in the UK they use something called a liquid U, which is a oh. U like a. So we would say, how would you say T U N E? How would you say that word? Tune. Tune. We just say O oh, O. Oh. We just say O. Yeah. It's the same when it's a long U. When it's that U makes an oo sound or oo oh, oh, makes an oo sound. It's the same. It's just oo. But in the UK, if if that sound is made by the letter U, they ma- it's U. It's literally the word U. Uh. So they say tune. But unless you're, you know, the queen, and you wouldn't say tune because that is just sort of hard to go tune. You'd say tune. So it's turned into just writing out or saying Say H O O N. That's so fun <laughs> and it's cute. Yeah, I so, like that word. I know. Liquid user, one of the hardest things, but like easiest things to differentiate. If if someone's yeah. putting on a British accent, one of the quickest ways you can tell if it's real or if it's fake is if they like say something like, oh, absolutely. Because it'd be absolutely. Because it's you, you as opposed to Ooh, ooh. that's hard. Yeah. Or absolutely. like, yeah. Tune is but tune like it's that liquid you eat every every regional dialect every class level dialect because that's a whole other conversation yeah um, mm-hmm. in co- in Cockney they'll have a U just as well as an RP royal pronunciation okay. um, so that's a very that. very British thing that has not come to the states at all really at all um, at all uh, and <laughs> just one, one more. Okay. okay. It's great. One more. This is a lovely one. Okay. Chuffed. Chuffed. C H U F F E D. I want to see if anybody can figure it out before I use it in a sentence. Yeah. Because this is a, this is another one that uh, you hear a lot. Um, I feel like with your your Scottish grandfather, you he might have said this. Maybe. They said this. They say this in Scotland. Chuffed. Chuffed. He used it in a sentence. Yeah. Uh, so you would be chuffed. Oh, okay. I'm absolutely chuffed about that. Chuffed. Oh, that's. Yeah. Uh, you did really well on a test at school. You come uh-huh. home, show your parents your grades, and you go, and they would go, "Oh, absolutely chuffed about that. Good job. Congratulations." Oh, so they're like pleased. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like proud, happy. Proud. I'm, ch- I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed Interesting. About that. Happy. Proud. Pleased. It like, seems uh, like, like the opposite. Yeah, it's a really negative sounding word. So chuff. Chief, <laughs> which is not chief. a nice thing. That is not a pleasant yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, no, so chuff is like chuff. proud kind of. Yeah, so it's being happy, but like pleased. So it's not, you're not just, uh, I'm in a good mood. I'm chuffed. Like you're chuffed about something. Okay, so something yeah. has to happen like, to something create Something makes feeling. you feel, yeah. Oh. Like, yeah, you, you've done a lesson in English and you've learned a new word. You're chuffed about that. Cool. Yeah, to yeah. me, I was like thinking it sounded kind of like you were bent out of yeah, shape Jack, a little bit. Yeah, Jack thought Jack thought it might have been exhausted, which would be It sense. sounds like it could be. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, um, yeah. That's, so that was fun. There's so, yeah. And there's so many. So many. They are big on the slang in the UK. I just because. The language has changed so the language has changed so much over the years. English is one of the I feel like one of the newest the English that we speak yeah. is very different. Recent like recently. Not even it's not been like this for very long. Yeah. Um, and, and in the UK they still have so many um old school and regional and little things that have just sort of stayed in the lexicon. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorite words for vocabulary, for those of you who don't know, lexicon oh, yes. is a great word. Hmm. Makes you that. sound very clever. So yeah. You say a lexicon and, um, it's, uh, or lingo to stick with the theme of 
lingo. The lingo, yeah. yeah. Big, big on the slang in the UK. That's fun, though. I mean, it, it mm. probably is a little hard for, like, non-native speakers to keep up maybe with that kind of thing. But that's why it's important yeah. to watch shows and stuff because that's where you hear Yeah, that. exactly. You will, hear, you will hear every single one of those on television and or movies, and they won't necessarily explain it. But you might figure it out based on the context. Yeah. Um, but you also may not. <laughs> And Sometimes. then you can Google it. We've got hey, you know, that's what Google it's and smartphones and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So was there any situation with any of the words you just told me or maybe another word that you said? I mean, you, you gave the story about the rubber. Yeah. Rubber. Is there any <laughs> yeah. other things that you can think of? Or um, uh, Yeah, there's, I mean, it's more for me. It's the words that are like the same, but different. Yeah. Um, like ordering chips at a restaurant yeah. or crisps. Like I've definitely gone places mm -hmm. and like ordered a sandwich and then without thinking about it said, um, and like, can I get uh, chips with that? And they're wanting like, like, wanting like potato chips. Potato like, chips. Because it's lunch or whatever. Yeah. Like a bag of potato chips. Um, and they'll be like, we don't have a fryer. We don't do yeah. that. And I'm like, they're like, oh, yeah. right. Because chips are fries in England. And so like that, or like biscuits versus cookie. Yes. Like more more than that. Or like, it's a lot of food things. Yeah. Like I asked someone once for uh, a zucchini in the oh. UK. Like I was making, I was making pasta or something. I was, was like, do you have it? Like, I need some zucchini from the grocery store. And they're like, what on earth is a zucchini? <laughs> You're like, also That's an eggplant, stuff. please. <laughs> yeah. Egg, yeah. They Most people know what an eggplant is, but okay. like, zucchini is a, or squash they're like because squash oh. is like a drink squash is oh. like juice in england oh. yeah is it's, it a brand or, um, or is it no so it's it's and they have it in most of europe they know they have it in norway it's called saft in norway it's oh, like yeah. concentrate or cordial oh like cordial okay yeah so that you know that so, so like you mix called... it in with water yeah so instead of fresh juice like you can get like Apple or like Ribena is the sort of most famous squash. It's black currant juice and you can either get it pre-made in like a bottle or a, like a juice box, or you can just buy Ribena that's like concentrate. It's like mm -hmm. syrupy and you yeah. mix it in with water and it makes yeah. juice. I think, and again, I'm not sure where everybody that's watching where you're all from, but that's something yeah. that is pretty prevalent in other parts of the world that we, we don't really, we pretty much just do no pre-made juices well in germany they do like shorla which is like essentially a spritzer but it's not the concentrate they like get actual mm. normal juice you could drink and then they still mix that just mm -hmm. to make it like a little less intense um but interesting. yeah yeah cool. so if you okay. ask for squash you're not going to get a gourd you're going to get a drink well, that's disappointing. I so, love squash, so I'd be pretty sad if I didn't get squash and I instead they don't get have a drink. they don't have yellow like yellow squash like they don't they don't have that. Either. No, they don't really have that in Germany either. I don't know, but it's yeah. exciting. I think that's a pretty Amer. I think that's a pretty American continent. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, more more like other than is when words are sort of the same, but Different. but not. Yeah. Um, more often, I just like learning new sort of slangy type things when people say things and I go, oh, what's that mean? Yeah. You no. Know, and then I try to use it as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, because it's oh, just, fun, it's though. always fun learning new words. Yeah. But yeah. Ch chips, chips, crisps, biscuits, cookie, that all that stuff. We can go through a list of yeah. American versus I want to do British that. Versus well, let's let's talk about this crisp thing because it's still kind of yeah. confusing to me. Potato <sighs> chips are called, by the way, the dogs might bark myself and the mailman is yeah. taking. Yeah. So, so what does the mailman drive? A lorry. Mm -hmm. I did. And it's also not mail. It's, they, it's not mail. And if you say Post. mail, they just hand you a dude. Yeah. Post. Post. If you say mail, they hand you a dude. <laughs> There's this guy. He's a male. The post. In his... Yes. You wanted a mail. The post. Here's one. The postman in his lorry. Very good. Right? Yes. Mm? Post, You're like, but it's postman. No. <laughs> you wouldn't say postman. You'd say postman. Postman. Oh, look. The postman in postman. his lorry. 
Very Biscuit good. Thing. Yes. Very proper. Yeah. Very proper. Okay. So chips yeah. are the potato chips. Or no, sorry. Chips are no. French fries. Uh, nope. Yep. Well, chips not quite. Because they course. also have something called fries. Yes. <laughs> okay. So chips are very British. So if you've ever had fish and chips. Yes. Fish and chips. The chips that come with fish and chips are very different than the fries you get at, say, in and out or McDonald's. Right. 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 Because they're thick. There's usually some potato skin left on them. Or is it like they're a wedge? Cooked dif- but thin, but thinner. Not like like an American style. I don't know why I just did that. An American style like <laughs> potato wedges uh-huh. are usually seasoned, right? And they're yeah. like cooked. They're cooked differently. They're crispy. Right. A, a chip, British chip, proper chips, might be a bit crispy on the outside, but they're really, really soft in the middle, Ooh. and they're yeah. like. The best kind. I know. I was just thinking that too. My stomach started yeah. growling. Uh, we're getting hungry. The, we're getting hungry. Oh, God. Chips sounds so good right now, too. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Pub lunch. Um, there's something called triple cooked chips. So they are mm-hmm. uh, boiled and then fried and then baked. And that's mm-hmm. like a good proper British pub chip will be a triple cooked chip. Um, oh, that sounds and, great. Yeah. So they're they're prepared slightly differently. And you usually put like vinegar and stuff on them. But they're yeah. they're thick, but they're not they're thick, but they're still sort of usually sort of square-ish in shape. Yeah. They're like the same shape as a French fry, but bigger. But bigger. That makes sense. So not quite you the same as a wedge. Fries? You know, yes. like steak fries yeah. are kind of thick. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's exactly okay. similar. And then so they do also do fries, but they might call and them the fries. Because the they're skinny. Yeah. Oh, I'm really hungry. I know. Well, we're going <laughs> to take about a break in a, a break in a minute and go have a break. I'm afraid. Yeah. 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 I know. And then, Sylvia, it's and so then, confusing. Yeah. It's, and, and it's still, it will still get me. I lived there for seven years. It still gets me some. Yeah. Um, because then you go to restaurants and you can choose between chips fries they will have chips fries and crisps like there's a restaurant okay. called um oh yeah pudding pudding is another one we can talk about yeah it's very confusing one. but there's a restaurant called um gourmet burger kitchen gbk in the uk which is very good fantastic veggie burger but you can order with your burger chips crisps or fries oh. and i always sit and go okay which one do i want because yeah. they also have chunky chips and skin on chips Oh, also two different things, and I then like fries, that. and then sounds good. Just, just so many things to choose from, yeah. and then pudding is just dessert in England. Any anything sweet is a pudding. That's because they don't have what we call pudding. They don't have yeah. pudding, like what we call pudding at all, like Jello pudding cups, not a thing. The closest thing they have is custard. I like it's custard. So, it's thin and it's but it's poured over and it's usually hot, right? They have that like, weird. yeah, yeah. Very in strange. Germany, pudding is like everywhere. There's always pudding. It's weird that oh, really? I just missed out on that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally don't, don't have that at all. Just have, just have it as dessert. Pudding just means Wait, dessert. Uta, do you mean, do we put extra yeah. chili powder in the pudding or in what? Oh, no, bread with so this is what Jen, Jen's eating bread with. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about their lunch right now, or dinner, I guess, depending on what time it is. <laughs> Sounds they're delicious. Jealous of food. Okay, let's play a little game where okay. one of us says a word, and then if there's a British or English, like American English version like of that word, you know? So, like, for okay. example, the trunk of a car. What do you call the trunk of a car? Oh, in yes. Yeah. Um, do we want to see if, if you guys know, too? Or should we just go yeah, straight in? Yeah, if you in? guys know, type yourself. it in. The trunk of a car. So, like, the back of a car. The back of a car, where you put your suitcases and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a – yeah, that you is guys- a different word. That is – they they do call that something different in the UK. Um, which has – is a word that also – that is – Kind yeah, it's on it because yeah, you are on it. Boots. They also wear boots. Like it's yeah. not, they don't have a different word for the boot you put on your foot. Yeah. 
but it's also the boot you you put your luggage in the boot and then the front is called a Mm. bonnet so it's like yeah Yeah. so the the front is a bonnet so the car is like a person and the boot is in the back on their feet as it were and on the front their head is the bonnet i guess that makes sense do you guys know what we call the bonnet in american english oh yeah that's true it is i had never really thought about that it's just like the engine is under the under the the hood yeah the the hood hood. yeah so the bonnet or the hood that's where you check you open up to check everything's good in there yeah yeah we've gone the fries and chips which is just bane of my existence um (laughs) oh i I've, I've i've got okay so when you live in a building and not like uh, your own house in america you live in an apartment mm-hmm. do you know uh, what you live in in england what the english equivalent of an apartment is because they they don't yeah good job Sylvia. yeah Sylvia. an apartment yeah you're flat i say flat a lot in germany because so many people use that um when they're speaking english yeah. so i use it a lot too but yeah in yeah in Oklahoma, you don't say like, oh, let's go to my flat. It sounds really weird. No, not at all. They'd be like, you mean like a flatbed truck? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. In Oklahoma, that's probably what they think you mean. That's more common. Um, And another one that was fun was figuring out. So in the United States, the the person you live with is called Uh your roommate. Right. Right? Yeah. So in the UK, your roommate is the person that lives in the same room as you. So if you're in like a dorm, you might have a roommate. Right. But once you're in an apartment or a flat or a house, the other people that live with you, if you call them a roommate, the people you're talking to will think that, well, you share a room. Yeah. Because they're your flatmate or your housemate. Yeah. Otherwise. Yeah. So I called someone I called someone a roommate and they were like, but don't you live in a two bedroom flat? And I was like, like, well, yeah. Yes, I'm like, well, but... why are you in one room? That doesn't make sense. We like to sleep like, oh, together. No, like, like, yeah, it's just it's just a cuddle every now and then. It gets cold in England, yeah. right? Uh, um, but, so but that yeah. was that was another one that I I still mess up. I'll still say roommate, yeah. and people will kind of that be would like, be hard to break. Ha-ha-ha. That would be a hard habit to break mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, that was a that was one that I that I that was another one that I learned the hard way. Um, oh, sure. oh, another one. What's this? <gasps> Those are your bangs. You call these. These are my bangs that have grown out quite a bit. I need, I need to cut my bangs, which I like the British version of this so much more. I do too. Do you guys know what where on earth did the bangs is. come from? Like, yeah, maybe someone bangs this... their head. <laughs> They're like bang. No. I, oh, my hair got cut. Yeah, <gasps> Jen. Fringe. This makes so much more sense. This is a fringe. It's like well, like the fringe in... of a jacket. Like to make this more confusing, I'm pretty sure in German that's called pony. So, but not ponytail. Oh, like a ponytail. But this is the pony. Oh, no. Yeah, Sylvia. Okay, it is pony. Why? Why? <laughs> I mean, but is it any weirder than bangs? No, but it feels weirder because I learned it later in life. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair. This makes sense. Um, we we've talked about eggplant and aubergine. Oh, another one. Huh? They yeah. can get confusing. Um, if you're putting your pants on in the morning uh, oh, in England, yeah. it means something different than it does in the United States. Yeah. You're telling someone like, which is another one I get in trouble with. Like if they're like, Hey, let's go meet up for breakfast. I'm like, great. I'll be right there. I just got to put pants on. And my friends. Yeah. Like, they're like, cool. <laughs> what? Okay, great. I, TMI. Thanks. Don't need to know yeah, that. They're like, Thanks for telling me. Because, yeah. What are, what are pants in the UK are, is what we Underwear. Yeah. You put your underwear on and then your pants on in the US. And in the UK, you put your pants and then your trousers. Yeah. Trousers and, if- and pants. Yeah. Which it's- um oh god, I'm typing. So yeah, that. don't don't uh don't tell people in England that you uh you gotta put your pants on before leaving the house because they're like, Well, yes, but please put something else on as well. Thank yeah. you very much. Pants and some other bottom cover yes something else Uh, skirt trousers dress don't care just you know you don't want to leave your house just in your pants 
No, that's because not that is another thing. You'll, that, yeah, that's a that's sort of a, a phrase talking about leaving the house in your pants. And I'm like, well, there's nothing wrong with that. But there is in England. Yeah, I think one time when I was over there, I said something like, oh, my pants are dirty or something. And I was like, oh, they went, oh, <laughs> don't, don't need, don't need like, to know oh. that. <laughs> don't, yeah, no, we that just don't need to talk about that one. That's all good. Thanks. Um, <laughs> what is the mother? Good. Oh, oh another Jen one. Jen asked a good. question real quick. Oh, yeah. Jen said, aren't trousers really yeah. formal pants in the U.S.? Yeah. We, when you say like work, work trousers, trousers. Yeah. I think of like yeah. some slacks or like, I don't know, not jeans or something like that. Yeah. You'd wear, you'd wear trousers to work with a suit jacket or something like suit trousers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, fancy They're pants. Slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> fancy pants as it fancy. were. <laughs> Oklahoma way. We're like, put on the fancy pants. We're going Put on out. them fancy pants. Going to Olive yeah. Garden. Put on your fancy pants. Um, <laughs> an another one that is the same as like the chips fries debate. Um, oh yeah. Drunk, and pissed, and angry. All kind Great of mean. Point. So in the U.S., yeah, this is a confusing one. Um, so in the U.K., if you're pissed, it means you're drunk. Oh. Let's go get pissed. Means. Uh, let's go let's go drink um uh, hello to indonesia hi yeah hello uh, that's, far, that's far away and fun um yeah, yeah the, let's go get pissed is means let's go get sloshed let's go get drunk okay. whereas if you're pissed in america it means you're angry yeah i'm gonna write um, this word down so they see it yeah because that's so like let's go get pissed and i'm like oh well but i have nothing to be angry about why would i want to do that um and they say livid for really, really mad. Like when we say, oh, pissed, they'd say, oh, yeah. I'm livid. Oh, that sounds so much nicer. Um, I have to say. Listen, I'm livid. I'm that livid. I'm like, well, you sound livid. cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Be livid with me because it's a yeah, fabulous word. It but yeah, that was a. Okay. Getting, getting pissed. Just as a. But then they also say taking the piss. Oh. Which means to make fun of something. Oh, yeah. interesting. Because they're, they're like they receiving them. something. Yeah, if you take the piss. <laughs> yeah, take, taking yeah, taking the piss out of someone means you're making fun of them. Huh. Okay. Cool. What about all kinds of new things today? We mentioned this a second ago, but what about mm -hmm. the cookie biscuit thing? I'm still not sure. Also, I feel like I need to explain <sighs> what biscuits are in the U.S. because. The world is missing. Yeah, out. because that's actually weirdly. Oh my God, you have no. I make the most amazing buttermilk biscuits. By the way, uh, I've learned over, during the apocalypse. Literally. I've taken up baking. I watch Great British yes. Bake Off. Yeah, I bake. I made cookies <laughs> last night. I make biscuits every weekend. They're great. I love biscuits. Do, I love. Uh, Uta, I don't. I the pissed thing. When you mean, um, sorry, Uta asked a question. The yeah. uh, pissed thing. Do you mean the drunk or taking the piss? I don't know. I know, right? Because piss also means what it does everywhere else as well. Not yeah. as much. They tend to say taking a wee more than a wee. Like, taking a piss. That's a cute. wee. I prefer that. Then we we also means small. Yeah. It's very, so we, it's very lad. Nice. wee little lad. A wee little People lad needs a wee. Do, <laughs> do they say lad and lassie for real? Scotland, they definitely, it's not lassie so much. I mean, I think the older gents, the older gents will say lassie, I think. But yeah. the younger Scots just might say lass. Lass. Um, but they definitely say lad. Everybody in the UK says, just went a bit Scottish there, sorry. Everybody, everybody says lad. Like, so they're like, we're going out with the lads tonight. Yeah, going out with the lads. Um, That's hilarious. Going out with the lads on a lash. Like you'll, if you're out if you're out and about like at a pub or at a bar mm -hmm. or a club, they don't really do bars. If you're at a pub or a club and you see a big group of dudes, <gasps> like literally you, you will go lads, lads, lads. Because that chances are so... they'll respond with lads, lads, lads. It's like, Oh my gosh. It's like a, it's a, it's a bro mating call almost. Yeah. It's, just, I it's feel like, like when you go, when you're with Australians and you go Aussie, 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 they have to go, oi, oi, oi. Oh, I don't know about that either. Oh. I don't know. I feel like British people go 
out when they go out. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. no time to waste. We're going out. No, we're going to be loud. No, we're yeah. going to be crazy. And there's a difference between going out and going out, out. Yeah. Out, and literally out. Say it out, out. It's a different thing. And everybody knows what out, 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 out. I'll go out. I don't really want to go out, out, you know? Yeah. I've said that so many times in my life. Uh, definitely. Um, but yes, uh, Jack bloody is another one. That's, that's actually, and it, that's a little old fashioned. Not many people say oh, no. bloody so much. I know. Don't I say bloody so quite as much as, as because it was so prevalent in films and TV for a really long time that I think yeah. Americans and I, I guess other people around the world think that it's a really commonplace word, but it's, it's not like people don't go, Oh, that bloody cat. <laughs> or you know whatever as much it sounds like they do in my uh, yeah you yeah in your head that's what you imagine them saying but they, yeah. they they don't they don't really say that as much which is i know oh, just sad. i wish i heard that more in england but it is and it is it's definitely one you'll hear but it's it's basically a way of not having to swear yeah because the brits they think on tv they love swearing out right well they they used to some because again mm. it was it was a it was a placeholder for a worse swear word. So if someone yes. said bloody something, it was the connotation of is what they meant was <laughs> something, you know. So like yeah. it was still like if you said it in an interview or whatever, you would still not really get away with it because they yeah. knew what you were meant to say. Um, um, okay. Like when we say friggin instead of yeah. the actual f word. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like a placeholder for a swear word. Yeah. But the Brits love swearing. So these days they just swear. Yeah, that's fun. You know, <laughs> it's it's, they don't say bloody as much because they'll just say, say the swear the word. Real one. They don't need to cover say it. The real one. Not yeah. really, not as much. Hmm. Okay, what about sports? Because this is something that I think everybody in the world knows this, but we're going to say it anyway. Mm. My husband gets Americans are wrong. Because yeah, my husband plays we're wrong. the sport. And he's like, I don't play well, soccer. Right. I play no. football. But if you yes. say football in America, they think you mean American A football, game that you don't not- use your feet for. Yes. I know. I know. It's like, why? The logic doesn't make any sense. Because Americans, because we're ornery and yeah. obstinate. Yeah. We just have to change things. Yep. We were like, oops, sorry, that was my microphone. That might have been loud. Uh, <laughs> we we're like, we're going to make a new game but and call it what you call your out. game. But then, oh, shoot, but people still want to play that other game. So let's make up a word for it instead. I just call it American football now. Just yeah. to make everything easier. Yeah. But then I get confused. Yeah. I don't know. Um, are there yeah, any other the, ones? Oh, wait, one. we were just about to talk about the biscuits, and then we totally got oh, yes. sidetracked. yes sidetracked by swearing which feels so, very appropriate for, for yeah this conversation. It, uh, it is. yes you explain what an american biscuit is first an american biscuit is like a circular tall kind of fluffy ace. bread yeah, you use ace oh, i'm sorry ace. jack just said another one what's that I mean, mean like awesome, awesome. <gasps> good oh, it's ace ace yeah that one still gets used yeah. Sorry, interrupted your oh. biscuit chat. Oh yeah. So a biscuit is like it's small guy and it's bread and you usually put like butter and maybe some like strawberry jam or it's a breakfast food usually. Yeah. But you can also have them with dinner yeah. depending on you what you're You can have eating. them anytime. Yeah. Cuz they're great. You should have them all the time. But they're oh, delicious every day. and they're buttery and like mm. I, I've always explained them to my British friends because in Britain they have something called a scone or a yeah. scone, depending on where you're from. And, but so a, a scone, scone is sort of sweet a little bit and it's crumbly, it's dry. Uh-huh. But they look similar to American biscuits. American they do. biscuits are served warm. Scones aren't warm. Mm-hmm. You, you serve biscuits fresh out the oven warm and they're like buttery and flaky, but savory. So you put yeah. something sweet on them, but you yeah. can also put like eggs and bacon yes. and make like a sandwich. Oh, or you can put like you gravy. put eggs and bacon on this. Mm, biscuits and gravy. Yeah, biscuits and gravy. 
Yeah, that's a classic thing. You would not put gravy on a scone, but they look alike. So like Americans always get, or Brits always get them confused. And I'm like, it's more like a croissant meets a scone. Because okay. it's got that same sort of, that flaky, yeah. you know, like, like croissants have layers and are yeah. buttery, but aren't necessarily yeah. sweet. But you right. can put something sweet yeah. or you can put something savory yeah. in slash on a croissant. But yeah, that's a good way of explaining American that. biscuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I was very British proud of that when I came up with our it. cookies. Crunchy little, well, hmm. Same issue we have with fries and chips. It, I don't know. I don't know. Because they do have like a chocolate chip cookie is still a chocolate chip cookie. If it's warm okay. and and melty or gooey, it's a cookie. Okay. Snickerdoodle, cookie. If it's crunchy and you can dunk it in tea, it's then a biscuit. Then it's a biscuit. There's, okay. there's your differentiation. That's a, that's a, a vast, vast simplification, but that's the easiest one I've come up with. Different, yeah, like an good. Oreo. Well, actually, Oreo is a wrong one because an Oreo is is a constant debate because it's also got cream in it. But so like, <laughs> like they have things called digest, like digestives. Mm -hmm. You know what a digestive is? They're like oat so cookies or something, right? Yeah. So they would call that, that would be a, a, a biscuit. Okay. Something you would dunk in tea. Okay. And it's kind of, and it, it cracks. Like biscuit week on Great British Bake Off. Yeah. That's a good way of figuring out. If you want to know about food, just watch British cooking shows. Yes. Yes. But yeah, I, I get I get laughed at a lot in England because I still I still say cookie because when I say biscuit, I think of a buttermilk biscuit. Yeah. Yeah. Which so do you prefer dunk that? Do you have a preference or do you prefer food in the US slash Texas? Or where, where what do you what's the deal? Well, so I'm <laughs> a vegetarian and have okay. been for forever. Okay. So it's a Texas in particular is a little difficult sometimes yeah. for me to eat. California yeah. is a little easier. Yeah, for sure. Um, Britain has actually gone in the last handful of years, Britain has gone very vegetarian and vegan friendly. Yeah. Because they've done something called Veganuary. Oh. Um, for the last handful of years. Yeah. It's like, I think it's for heart health. So, you know, people have like no shave November, that kind of stuff. Yes. People will go vegetarian or vegan for the month of January. Cool. And if they, and you know, get people to pledge or it's like, if I make it, then you are going to give me $20 that I'll give to charity or whatever. Yeah. Um, That's nice. And so a lot mm. of restaurants started having mm. veganuary menus, started serving more vegetarian and vegan friendly options. Jack knows veganuary. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, and those restaurants went, actually, these are selling really well. Yeah. It's really easy and cheap to make. And so yeah. they just kept the menus up. So like now cool. when the, the UK, it's really, really easy for me to find something to eat, which is nice. Yeah. Um, I think Germany's similar. I mean, they don't do Veganuary as far as I'm concerned, but like they now, especially in Berlin, oh my gosh, it's like mm -hmm. everywhere you go, there's multiple, multiple vegetarian options, usually a few vegan yeah. options too, like everywhere now, yeah. which is nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, Britain, Britain gets a bad rap when it comes to food. Just because they used to fry everything. I had a bad experience. What's wrong with that? Oh, really? So here's, here's the story. I, here's the scoop. When I was 11, I went there for the first time to visit some like extended family. And mm -hmm. I didn't like fish when I was a kid at all. None of it. And so we went there and everybody wanted to go get fish and chips from this pub place. And so we went and I was like, do you guys have like chicken? And they were like, no. And I was like, that's weird. So I was like, can you guys just like Sausage. make a, some sort of grilled cheese sandwich situation? They were like, what is a grilled cheese? And I was like, okay, yeah. it's just bread with yeah. cheese in the middle. And then it, you heat it and it, you know, it melts the cheese and it's delicious. They bring the thing out. It was two pieces of white bread, like sandwich bread with shredded cheese in the middle and yeah. not heated at all. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, so that's a cheese. So a cheese, oh, no. a cheese sandwich is that usually with butter. So like a cheese so sandwich weird. is it. Um, so like one of my, one of my favorite, they do like cheese and pickle, which isn't like green pickles. Like we do. It's like, like an onion chutney is what they call pickle. Ooh, I would like that. Uh, 
it's actually really good. But so yeah. like, like a classic British cheese sandwich is usually cheese and pickle, which is white bread, butter, shredded cheddar cheese, which Why is the is other it thing. Why is it shredded? Like eat cheddar. Why is it shredded? That's the because it's part. usually it's it's usually put on some like it's usually put on something else or it's used to melt into something right. or it's like a, it's like a cooking cheese. Okay. But they do have something called a cheddar plowman's, which they will use um, sliced cheese sliced. for. It makes and more it's sense. Just, mm, it it's feels so less awesome. weird for some reason, but I remember, yeah. I yeah. Like, but the, the trick is if at, a, at a fish and chip shop, if you don't like fish, they will always have sausage, like fish ah. and chips and sausages. Okay. I don't know why. But that's well, the sort like of other now. thing they have. I'll, well, I'll, then you're probably fine. Okay. <laughs> and they're also fried to high heaven, so. Yeah. Greasy, but they, they do they do love a fried food. I I yeah. get this, but it's you know there's nothing wrong with fried food. No, you gotta have it a little bit every once in a while, right? Yeah, Keeps I up. mean, might give you a heart attack if you have too much of it pretty soon. But actually, heart health in the UK not as bad as it could be. Yeah, well, maybe because they're doing veganuary. <laughs> they're doing veganuary exactly, Helping. precisely. <laughs> oh, okay. so much food, duck. Jack has asked a question. I am not actually originally from Texas, as you may be, may or may not be able to tell from my accent. Uh, I am from California, originally San Francisco Bay Area, but my parents are Texan born and bred. Um, and so about 15 years ago now, they moved, once all of their children were grown up, they moved from California back to Texas because it's a little bit cheaper and my dad got a really good job offer and um, Wait, to so the people just, listening, do you hear? So when me and Haley are talking, hey, Heiko, mm -hmm. when me and Haley are talking, do you guys hear differences in our accent? Because, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Because, Emily, you do you do have a little bit more of sort of a southern -y yeah, accent than like I Yeah, like I have things I... And, like, Brian, Brian really sounds different than us Yeah, in my, in my ear. I um, don't really hear yeah, much I, of differences, but I'm bad at that. Like, we... Already yeah. talked about. I'm like, yeah. what? I don't know. But so like my 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 parents have so let's see if I can get into it after being in Brit Britland. My parents have a pretty have pretty thick Texas accents. Like, yeah. It's it's not like my my dad worse than my mom for sure has a has like a solid full blown yeah. like Texas accent. He, you know, he goes he goes to work, he works in a hospital, he's a doctor. Yeah. So it's that he, like he's got he's got oh one of my favorite things is um when he when he's angry when he's bored with you he'll just go I'm tired of hearing you talk which is one of my very favorite things <laughs> I love <laughs> that I, I hear I hear that a lot from my daddy but I'm so like that's a very that. sort of slight that's a thick yeah. accent that I just put on and yeah. I'd be interested to, to, can 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 you guys tell when I, I when I switch can into hear okay the difference and between like, us when I've Oh, ooh, good job. Wow. I, I mean, I can too, but that's a, that's an American with, that does dialect training. So good yeah. job, I go. It's impressive. Um, yeah. My dad, for example, you, says wash instead of wash. Go wash, go wash, wash the car. Mm -hmm. yeah. Water. Does he say like, no, water? That's a. Water. <laughs> water. That's a, that's a New England thing. Water. Oh, Brian would know about that then. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really Jersey more than Boston. But uh, when I've been going into like British type accent, have people been able to tell that some? Yeah. I've been doing that a lot on and off. Yeah. Um, and that's I that's a that. lighter difference for me. I do <laughs> Heiko it. says, I do ha ha, y'all gone yonder. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all is a thick, y'all, I want y'all to catch on with the rest of the world. Y'all is the best word ever i agree y'all is all encompassing it's gender non-specific yeah it, it, you you can just use it i don't know in oklahoma do you say all y'all too all y'all mm -hmm. you yeah. say all y'all yeah all y'all all y'all if there's a whole bunch of people it's all y'all yeah. y'all is a couple all y'all come over everyone's invited all y'all come on around yeah i love y'all brian and i just recently made everybody. a video about that that will be coming soon so be sure to check mm. out the YouTube channel for that. Oh, um, well, let's keep an eye out. Speaking of the differences in accents, mm -hmm. I want you to quiz us. Okay. And like, I want okay. you to say a word 
say two words or say the same word one time in British English and one time in American English, but like change Ooh, the word okay. so we don't know. And then mm-hmm. we'll guess which one was which. Or I'm not going to okay. guess because I don't know, but I want the viewers okay. to guess. To get an idea of listening. Okay. Um, let's think back on some words that we've said today. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Um, theater. Theater. Okay, guys. So which one was the first one British or American English? And the second one, same question. Theater. So we'll in a second. Theater. What do we think? Alan's, this, we're starting off kind of easy. Yeah. There are a couple very what do you guys specific think? different Did sort you of. Hear the difference. I'm intrigued to see because this is something we were talking about. Yeah. I like watching TV shows in uh, other languages and trying to pick up, yeah, on, like little. different different dialects. Watching like someone from the south of France sounds different than a Parisian or something like it. Yeah, pick up little things. Yes, Jack is. Yes, you are Jack Captain T. You guys are. Heiko, everybody, good yeah. job. That was that was an easy one. That was an okay. easy one. One of the ways you can hear that. So the easiest difference between American and, and British is the R sound. It's like if it's at the end of a word, Brits don't pronounce that er. Yeah. So theater, theater, it's an er sound. Ta. As well as the T. Mm-hmm. Brits go t. Yeah. We just turn everything into a d because we're yeah. lazy. Theater. Theater. Or some theater. theater. Um, okay. So uh, uh, speaking of, let's go England versus England. Oh, that one's a little harder. Lighter. Maybe. England. England. Okay. That's guys. a very slight difference. That one's, yeah, just a little baby. That's almost more about cadence and rhythm than mm-hmm. England. Mm-hmm. England. Oh, and also the the E vowel, the difference in the E vowel. Say them oh, again. I'm such a voice and speech nerd. <laughs> England, England. I think that one was the yeah. most clear too. So maybe that one kind of, because Captain yeah. said he had no idea. Oh, Sylvia said. Oh, Sylvia. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So in England, it's so British. Yeah, really. That was a that I that was a hard one. Sorry. That was, was good. Uh, that was kind of trick, kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> British English is softer all around and like voice and speech turns, your soft palate is raised. This sort of the shape of your mouth in American English is this. We open the front of our mouth, but keep the back of our mouth closed. In British English, it's the opposite. They keep the front of their, their uh, lips and their teeth close together hmm. and make most of the sound back here. So E versus E, England uh, versus England. And, oh, it feels weird. Um, I know, England. So you make the E sound by raising your soft palate, England. And same with I, I, I versus I, I. It's very oh, minute. Yeah. And that was that was tricky. I'm sorry I tricked you all. It was a good one. Um, okay, so we'll go back to something a little easier. Mm-hmm. Let's try what we're doing right now. We are okay. talking, or are we talking? Ah. Talk. 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 That's another vowel. Talk, talk. We are okay. talking, we are talking. Oh, yeah. The vowel is totally different on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's another big, big difference between US and UK, that long A sound. Okay. So yes. Talking. So the US so that one is... is talking. Mm-hmm. Ah, we make an ah for that long, like a, like a long A, not, not a long A. I guess what, whatever that, I can't say. That Ah, sound yeah. a l or a like we say awesome. Yeah, we're talking and it's awesome. Uh-huh. In Britain, um, that because again everything is rounded like awesome talking. You make this shape with your mouth. It's awesome talking. Ah. We're talking and it's absolutely awesome. That's really awesome we're with the playing ball. Yeah, that's that cool. sort of that's a voice and speech nerd. It's one of the things. Love that. that thing. Uh, you can say UK or Britain. Heiko, uh, it that encompasses all of it. You can also say England if you're just talking about England. Right. But if I said 
right, let's be English. And then I started talking in a Welsh accent and all of my Welsh friends would never forgive me. <laughs> Wales is not England, but it is part of Britain. It is the UK. So uh, you, you can say UK is more contemporary, more, more people say UK than Great Britain. Um, but you'd, you'd say British. Yeah. In, encompasses all of the people from the UK are all Brits. So my right. Welsh friends are Welsh, but they're also British. So you you use British as like the adjective to describe something from yeah, the UK. Yeah, from the UK. Uh, yeah, and like, or you're English, if you're from England, Scottish, yeah. Scottish, Scottish, Welsh, right. and then Northern Ireland, which Ireland and Northern, that's a whole other kettle of fish, right? Really. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's a whole, that's a whole nother The whole lesson. live stream in and of itself is that oh, yes. story. Yeah, that's a very, very different thing. And I can't do a North Irish accent anyway, so. Can you do a Scottish a accent? Skip. Heiko says he loves Scotland and I do too. Scotland is, Scotland is lovely. Edinburgh is one of my very favorite cities, like oh. in the whole world. It's magnificent. The, the castle in um, Edinburgh is like, mag and they do an amazing theater um, festival yeah. in Scotland, in Edinburgh every summer called the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. And it's like the greatest theatre, like small pre-West End theatres that go up. And it's fantastic. Uh, it's great. Am I, I reminding you that. of your granddad? I love it. But where, I is, where, it. where was he from in Scotland? Oh, he was from somewhere called Forfur. It's a tiny little town. Forfur? That's Forfur. a lot of ours for a Forfur. Scottish accent. Forfur. Forfur. Let me, um, Google right now where that's... It's the closest. Easiest. So this Angus. is this is a helpful little lesson as well. Uh, it's true of the U.S. and probably everywhere. If you're from a smaller city, the easiest way to explain to someone is to start with like a larger area. So in the U.S., I'd say I'm from America. I'm from California. I'm from San Francisco. I'm from Palo Alto. So like yeah. you, you slowly get closer and closer. So if you say four far. Scotland. Yeah. If you say four for all, I'll have no idea. If you say Scotland, I go, okay, so he's Scottish. Where in Scotland? He's Glasgow. located 13 miles north of Dundee. Oh, Dundee. Okay. So you go Dundee. It's another big city. I need to remember know. that. Very northern. Okay. So yeah. So you'd say he's from like Dundee. And if somebody goes, oh, I love Dundee. That's my favorite city. You can go, oh, he's from Forfar, just outside of Dundee. <laughs> and then they go, oh, I've been there. The greatest pub I've ever been to. <laughs> it's totally a totally a different thing i love it <laughs> i could dated a girl from ireland just i mean to be I fair i love an irish accent too it's, a, it's a very so good beautiful one. sounding very very soft yeah very soft sounding accent so I, my my irish my irish isn't is is solid i won't i won't offend any of my irish <laughs> friends by attempting an irish accent today um, oh. but yeah that's that's a helpful like i told people that i lived in the uk and then mm -hmm. I lived in London, and then I yeah. lived in South London, and then I lived Camberwell, Brixton area. So that's we also that's have a video thing. on that on the channel as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do indeed. The helpful little thing. Um, yeah, are there any other are there any other like words that you you guys would like to hear yeah. said in in either an American or a British accent? Because I know that there are mm. like again from like movies or TVs or names. Like when you when you hear a name. Um, in a movie that's happened to me before oh, yeah. um, where I hear a name in like yeah in a British movie and I and I think it's or in D&D &D, because I play with a bunch of Brits in D&D &D, and they're all oh, fantasy yeah. made up names and so oh, they'll say something yeah. and I'll write it and then they'll say it later oh that's Jen that's the hardest word in the world <laughs> in any language <laughs> in any English dialect um, but yeah, they'll say a name and I'll write it out. And I've inevitably put like three R's in it and there's not a single R. Oh yeah, in, for in sure. Um, like, Oh, well, yeah. These, water. Yeah. Water. Water. Yeah. yeah so in, in England, we were talking, somebody brought up earlier, brought up Cockney. So like when I talk, when I talk in an English accent, it tends to be a bit posh because it's, um, most likely what people want to hear and what most likely you're going to get cast as, as, as sort of London-y, posh, contemporary. It's called estuary English. It sort of uh, encompasses yes. the entirety around London, but I tend to go on the slightly more posh side because it's better um, for diction because they actually do say things like their T's. Cockney is an old form 
of London dialect, lower class London dialect, that don't say things like their teas. So they would say water, a glass of water, which is like, water. it's cold out, don't forget your mittens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Water, so they did like mittens. the glottal stop. Mittens, yeah, mittens. Or, um, yeah, like that, kind of like water. Like they've got a glottal stop for the teas. Um, <laughs> and they say things, like things. They don't say T-H, things. they say things. Yeah, things. thanks. Thanks for the water. Do you know what what Captain T is trying to say here? Bow. Bottle of water. Bo- <laughs> bo- bottle of water. Yeah, bottle. bottle. <laughs> yeah. So Adele, you all know you all know Adele, yes. We all know Adele. Adele is one of the most famous, like last surviving full blown cockneys. Oh. Very few yeah. people. If you think about like hearing her talk, not many people actually talk. It's it's brash but wonderful but yeah if you talk to Adele she will ask for a bottle of water uh, in a, in a recent that. life she's talking about divorce she's been divorced yeah. darling oh. I'm thirsty I need I'm thirsty I need a bottle of water thirsty thirsty what about this one yeah. can you quiz us on this one? Oh yeah okay this one will be this one will be easy to tell the difference because it is a very weird word okay. um turtle turtle so or different. turtle, or turtle, turtle, T- turtle, turtle, turtle. Oh, the American one sounds so different than the others. I know, right? <laughs> I know. I feel so bad for any 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 non-native speaker trying to say the word turtle. Is just it's because of because yeah, it's just a weird it's just a weird one. It's a weird one, but yeah. So American obviously is turtle posh british turtle and then cockney would be turtle turtle that's scotland the fun one would be tur- scotland would be turtle <laughs> a turtle could you imagine a turtle in tartan Tur- that'd be amazing no, I can't do turtle it. in tartan that's a lot of ours <laughs> um cemetery okay so oh, cem- so cemetery. one of the fun things one of the fun things interesting things about british english as well um because as you all know, spelling in English is weird and nonsensical, and we can blame mm-hmm. England for that. Uh, A-R-Y, in American, we'd say cemetery, right? Yeah. We pronounce A-R, cemetery. In there, it'd be cemetery. Yeah. They, cemetery. It's, so it's, they, they, they A-R-Y, you get rid of the, the R, so it's cemetery, or sanctuary, or mm-hmm. um, Glastonbury. U R Y turns the same um, mm-hmm. in a weird. Well, way. also with. Um, hold on. Ninja Turtles. I hope I spelled that right. I think I might have spelled it wrong, but we get it. We uh, would yeah. say Edinburgh in English. Yeah, Edin- like American Edinburgh. English, but, or Edin, wait, it's we would say Edinburgh or something. We, in yeah, English. so there are a lot of, a lot of Americans say Edinburgh. Yeah. Which is and I hear it and I'm like. Silly. Or, Ed- or Edinburgh. You hear yeah. Edinburgh as well, Edinburgh, but that's like yeah. the Americanized yeah. pronunciation. Yeah, so it's Edinburgh, Edinburgh, but it's Edinburgh. like Edinburgh, Edinburgh. It should be. It's not Edinburgh, Edinburgh, yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. yeah. So same with so mili- military becomes mm-hmm. military, military, military. Call the military. It's that same ch that we that they that that's from so like with tune. T R yeah. turns into tr as well. So you you go look at the trees as opposed to the trees. It's like a weird they ch ch ch. Don't know why. What about Oh, this that's one. another hard one. Oh. That's okay. So let's 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 see if we can figure. I'll give you 3. We'll do American, Cockney and prop and RP English. So we'll see. Let's I got to mix them up in my head now. Okay. Okay. Rural Rural, rural. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah, it's rural, hard rural, rural, rural. I hate because that of word. an. Oh, uh, me too. <laughs> the rural <laughs> juror from Thirty Rock, brilliant bit. Uh, R is in England. At the end of a word, get get. It's called non-rhotic, very mm-hmm. specific voice and speech term. Um, so. Not quite, Captain T. You've been on a roll. That was a hard one. Yeah. Yes, Jen. The last one is U.S. 
Yeah. Um, so at the end of a word, Brits will drop the R. But in the middle of a word or the beginning of a word, they still they still will say it. But depending on whether it's posh or cockney, it's it's a different, like they're further back in cockney and further forward is the best way to explain them. So that one was hard. So let's let's go. Rural is British, is RP. Rural is cockney. And rural is American. Uh, the, I, I hate saying that Because word. the easiest way to differentiate that one is cockney, the L becomes a W. Rural. 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 Whereas oh, in prop, like RP, they'd still say yeah, a rough, a rough rural place in proper English and <laughs> a rough rural place in Cockney. You sound like that a guy from Batman. Rural... What's his name? Oh, yeah. My Michael Caine. Michael yeah, Caine Michael Caine. Another, Michael Caine is another one who's like a proper Cockney, like one of the last. Like, I love it. Michael Caine is, is full-blown Cockney. Yeah, he'd say rural. He'd say, <laughs> Adele, Adele. Her name is Adele. Not Adele. 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 Let's listen to listen to her uh, introduce herself. Go watch a video of Adele saying her own name, and it sounds like A D E W Adele. Adele. -E -D -E. Oh, that's yeah. so cute. So rural, as opposed rural. to rural. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. that was a hard. That was a hard one for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're putting you to work today. You're putting me to work today. That was a. That was a almost as bad of a tongue twister as red lorry, yellow lorry. Oh, God. Oh, tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are a whole other thing. By the way, what um, what about some, like, phrases that are different, mm. right? Like, like for like example, idioms? yeah, like we say, like, six of one, half a dozen of the other or something like that. Yeah, they say, and I learned this, it's mostly a Northern English thing, but they say six and two threes. Oh, Makes sense, Makes sense, right? Yeah. I was like, what? Well, except that we say, or we we put an or, right? Which makes sense to me. Like six of one or half a dozen of the other. Yeah. But they say six. It's because I think the full phrase is between, uh, it's between six and two threes, really. So you're choosing between six and two threes, which yeah. is six. It's the whole point. Is if it's basically, if it's the same. Yeah. Huh, squirrel is another. You guys are being... That's yeah. intense. Squirrel, 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 and squirrel, 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 squirrel. I don't know. I don't, they don't like them. They're little tree rats, really. We don't like them. Don't feed them. Let them all die. That's what I say. So I don't have to say the word squirrel in a company accent. <laughs> choir. Yeah. So choir, choir, a very possibly choir, but um, choir, choir. Yeah. Yeah. R, that's hard going vowel to the to an R. Yeah. Like quiet quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound at the end there. Oh. Um, but yeah, so uh f idioms, idioms and phrases. Oh, yeah. I will continue to just randomly pop out British words if people yes, hear them. I love it. My it's my party trick. My sister, when I live over in the UK, she's in Seattle, so it's an eight-hour time difference. So a lot of times, like when I'm waking up in the morning, she's out with her friends like at a bar or whatever um and every now and then she will call me and be like is my sister she lives in england do do an accent uh, <laughs> she'll like tell make me say all of their names in a british accent i'm her i'm her bar party entertainment trick. So, yeah <laughs> so i'm used to it uh some other it. good um uh one of my favorites which is a, a little bit uh brusque okay. is if you um if you like, don't care, if it doesn't matter, you don't care. Like, I really don't feel like going into work today. You can't be asked. Ah, really. okay. So and like, so can't be bothered. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah, can't be asked, which ass, A-R-S-E, which is not the same as ass, but is the same as ass. But it means the is same. A, it means the same thing. Arse is like a, Kind of similar to bloody, like by putting that R in there, mm. it suddenly makes it not a swear word. Yeah. Like okay. kids can say arse, but they can't But we say all know ass. what like it means. But we all know what it means. Yeah. So okay. but I have no idea where that phrase came from. I don't know if it's like, oh, I can't be bothered to get off of my arse. Like, I have no Maybe. idea. Maybe but you hear that makes sense. Like, oh, I can't be bothered. Oh, I can't be arsed, really. 
that want to go can't be yeah. asked. Oh, good. Okay. It's another one that's fine. Yeah. Can't be bothered. Um, Don't want to do something. Why? Yeah, can't be asked. Uh, another one that always kind of, yeah, aunt, aunt. Well, depending on yeah. I go, mm-hmm. just brought that up. That's an interesting one because even in the U.S. it differs. What do you say? Well, huh. This is where it gets confusing because I was a Californian <laughs> raised by Texans. So it's yeah. the same with the word V-A-S-E. Oh. Um, yeah. And the word C-A-R-A-M-E-L. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I also grew well. up near a city called Carmel, which just oh. threw in a wrench, yeah. threw a spanner in the works, if I remember. Oh, a spanner um, in the works, eh? Spanner in the wax. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so some people say aunt and some people say aunt. Mm-hmm. And I grew up saying both. Okay. So I honestly couldn't tell you which one, which one is which. Yeah. It kind I say of depends aunt. on the flow. Of the aunt, aunt, I believe. Yeah. But I'm an yeah. aunt girl. I, yeah. And same with caramel, 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 caramel. Caramel. I don't even know. I, don't, I say caramel. caramel. I say caramel, caramel sometimes if I'm feeling fancy yeah. or something. I yeah. don't know. Sometimes yeah, it's growing up, I grew up 30 minutes away from a city named called Carmel. Yeah. Is, is Very confusing. Yeah. What was the other Speaking one you mentioned? Confusing. What, what you wor- there, words? Oh, yeah, V-A-S-E. Said, yes. What do you, what do you say? Again, said it both. Both. I say vase. I, uh, vase versus vase. I never say I, vase. I say both. Vase sounds too fancy for me. I feel like I need vase. a very expensive one. A vase. Yeah. A vase. I mean, this is a vase. This is just a vase. Yeah. You know, the exactly. nice flowers in the vase, but like, eh, put the daisies yeah. in a vase. Exactly. <laughs> Good. That. There we go. Let's make that. That's a thing. That's official now. That's yeah. that's canon. That Makes matters. more sense. Um, another idiom yes. that confuses me a little bit uh, is, so in the U.S., if I said I was mad about it. Oh, what yeah. what would that mean? You're angry about you. something. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, mad, so, but if angry. you're mad about if you're mad about something in England, it means you really like it. Yeah, not feeling mad about that means I really really like this thing. So but maybe it's something um, equivalent to like the American like I'm crazy for that. Like crazy. Yeah, for that's that exactly that's exactly what it is. Okay. Um, because mad means crazy in England as well. So can you be so mad like, about like a new person you're dating or something? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I've gone up. Oh, you're mad about him, aren't you? You can't stop talking about him. Yeah. Um, but then I would get in trouble because I'd say things like, oh, I'm not mad about that. As if oh. like being like, hey, so let's have dinner. We're going to have dinner a bit early. We're thinking dinner on like six. Is that okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm not mad about that. And yeah. Go, okay. Should we do like seven or eight? I'm like, no. I mean, like, that doesn't make me angry. Like that we're good. We're fine. That's yeah. perfect. Um, hello, Max. Max is one of those Hi, words Max. that's the same. Max, <laughs> Max, Max is the same in, in British Max. and uh, that, that, that short A, A mm-hmm. sound is, is the same in all of them. Well, then um, that's easy. But yeah. And yeah, ma- um, I'm mad about you would mean that, yeah, I, I really like you. Wasn't that Actually, a show? About- that was a show, Mad About You. Yeah, Mad that. About You. Um, oh, yeah, that was old school. I didn't even think that was American. Was that an American show? I don't know, but I just remember it being in the world. Yeah, but it, I don't remember it, watching it. That phrase was it? Yeah. So being mad about something is is good in yeah. England, but not so good in America. Yeah. And um, things can drive you mad or in British English mm-hmm. or whatever, but in American English, we would just say drive you crazy. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Echo. It's my, my fancy little gaming chair. <laughs> <laughs> Very comfortable. Oh yeah. There's um, the magazine mad. You're right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Old school, old school. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's another one. Oh, back to the whole chips debate. Uh, Something's cheap as chips, which I love. Oh, if something is makes... really in, yeah, really inexpensive. Do we have an chips. equivalent of that in English? In yeah, English? Uta, yeah, Ute. A Ute is a is a flatbed is a pickup truck in Australia. Oh, I don't know how to pin a kind of thing, but that's oh, you can do it. It's, I mean, you just click it. Um, oh, yeah. that's a fun. I don't. Yeah, that's a Ute is a Ute. pickup truck in Australia. Fun little phrase. Ute, I'm gonna start speaking. calling you Ute now. You just start you. calling her like F one fifty or something. Yeah, truck. Um, just truck. Hey, truck. What's up? Hey, truck. Um, yeah. So if something is really inexpensive. It's cheapest chips because. What do we say in American English for that? Um, um, 
Is there an equivalent? <gasps> cheap as dirt. Yeah, cheap as dirt. Probably the closest one. Cheap as chips sounds um, way cuter. Cheap as chips is way fun. I say cheap as chips a lot. It's a, I love it's that. a cute one. Oh, that's cheap as chips. <laughs> Please don't. Sorry, I hate truck. That. <laughs> Sorry. We won't, we won't do it anymore, truck. I promise. <laughs> Truck. That was the last one. That was the last one. Uh, and we talked about we talked about taking the piss, which is just a uh, horrible phrase. So if you don't like taking the piss, you can say taking the Mickey. What's a Mickey? Um, I have no idea, but it just oh. means t- making fun of someone. St- ah, you're taking That's the Mick, cute. ain't you? Taking the Mickey. Taking the Mickey. That sounds cute. It doesn't yeah. sound taking as like Mick. taking the Mickey. Yeah, it's not nearly as horrific as taking the horrific. piss. Are there any like? <laughs> I know it's a weird, horrible phrase. Um. But I do idioms are like one of my very favorite things. Yeah, I, I love, love them. them too. Do you guys have any idioms that you've heard of in American English or British English and you want to share and tell the other people watching or that you have questions about? Because we yeah, love idioms. Yeah. Yeah. They're so idioms fun. are my very favorite thing. And like, it's cool how so many idioms translate into different languages. Like there's so many that mm-hmm. when I'm teaching in the mm-hmm. class, I'll ask my students and they have the same one in their language. Yeah. Or my favorite is when like the, they have like an idiom for the same thing, mm-hmm. but it's like a completely yeah. like, the translation is not yeah. at all the same. The same. Like ra- raining cats and dogs. I love That's, that one. Yeah. I know. It's in, so cute. In, where is it? They have somewhere else has another one that's like, I know, I'm not going to remember what it is. I'm putting myself on the spot with it, but they have a thing. that's like, oh yeah, no, we have the same thing, but it means, but it's, it's like Sorry. raining witches and brooms or something is the, oh. is the translation <laughs> for it. And I can't remember where. Yeah, throw a spanner in the works. That's another one because a spanner is a is a wrench. Yeah, we say. Wrench. Do we say like throw, throw a hammer in, in the works. A monkey wrench. I've never heard that. Monkey phrase. wrench. I'd say throw it. No, I know what a monkey wrench is, but, I, ah. but the phrase that I'd say is throw a um, hammer in the works. Well, that was oh. a hammer in the works. I've never heard oh, that. Someone's gardeners are outside if it's gotten loud. I apologize. Oh. Um, yeah, no, that's maybe, I don't know. Because I've never heard throw a monkey wrench in, well, which, would, like which would be a more direct translation to spanner yeah. in the works. I'm trying to think of how we would say it. I just know that the monkey wrench thing is it, but I don't know, because I don't say that. So it feels weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we we in America, you that that's a that's a phrase that I've heard and used is well, that's a hammer in the works. Interesting. I haven't heard that one. I wonder if it's like a California slash Texas one. What's throw wobbly? Oh. Is that like throw a tantrum? I don't know. It sounds funny though. I don't I know. Go. What yeah, I go with, what's where is that from? Cause that's that's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, my my brain goes like that would be like throwing a tantrum. Yeah. Well, well, so in England, having a bit of a wobble means yeah, uh, ha, called it yeah, idiom queen. Um, having a bit of a wobble queen. in England means that you're like a little like a little sad, getting a little sad or worried about something. Like if you okay, like when you go through it, when you go through a breakup or something like. Uh. Three or four weeks after a breakup, someone asks how you were. You're like, you know, I've been okay. I had a bit of a wobble this morning, but oh, we're fine. We're over. It's everything that's okay cute. now. That's cute. I want to start using yeah. that. That's a cute way to be like, I'm emotionally not okay. Yeah. Like my dog, my dog was a bit sick last night. And I definitely had a bit of like, not a full-blown breakdown. Like yes. nothing, but like a bit of a wobble. Just a, little got bit. a little bit worried. Bit of a wobble. Um, I love that. But yeah, no, having a. Like, so we would say throw, what, like throwing a hissy fit for throwing hissy a wobble? Fit. Mm-hmm. Have it, throw a wobbly, having a hissy fit, which is just a fabulous phrase as well in America. I love that too. Yeah. Lots yeah. of toddlers hissy throw fit. hissy fits. Uh, yeah. That's not a fun thing. It's a cute word. Oh, but are you talking about the, the Irish ex? Was she the one oh, saying yeah. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, maybe that's an Irish, maybe that's an Irish phrase. That would make sense. That would yeah. make sense. They have they have their they have their own things because um, Irish is its own language. Yep. Yeah. Dead horse. I love this phrase, but it's kind of sad. But it's, yeah, it's I love the yeah. description and I just love the, like like, the mental image. Yeah, that comes but it's sad. Yeah, it's a good description. I like. I'm the opposite. I'll say that, and then you actually think about the mental image and go, "Oh, 
Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I know. It's like, oh, it's very well describes what it is, but it's also, yeah. but if you beat a dead horse, for those of you who don't know, yes, that just means you're doing, you're saying the same thing, making the same point over and over again. And like, it's over. Like, you know, like no point hitting something that's already down. Yeah. And then there's also another phrase that we say. I think that comes from horse racing though, which is also sort of a sad in and of itself topic. Yes. To the choir. Good one. Yeah. And that just means, Haley, do you want to explain what that one means? Uh, so preaching to the choir, because uh, just means the same sort of thing. Like you're just telling me something I already know. You're preaching yeah. to the choir. Yeah. The choir's in church every single week. The pastor's probably it. already practiced their sermon in front of them. Yeah. They've heard it before. There's no point. If it's just the choir there, they know what you're saying. That Don't preach to the choir. That right. Thing. So um, if you're talking about something that, we all know, bye, we Heiko. all agree on. Oh, bye, Heiko. Thanks for coming in. But yeah, um, if you're talking yeah. about something we all already know, we agree on, you could say, yeah. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but let me just say this again, blah, blah, blah. But I just have to reiterate. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's true. That's a good one. Yeah, I love idioms. Yeah. Idioms are okay. a great way to converse. It is. Okay, guys, well... That was kind of the end of what, yeah. you know, we had planned for y'all today. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any other, I know I caught myself when I said it too. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or anything that like idioms or anything you hear, you can always comment back on the stream. Um, it'll be on YouTube forever. So like <laughs> go back, rewatch some things. Thanks YouTube. Missed parts. And then um, yeah, comment some other idioms or fun things you've learned about British English versus American English. And mm -hmm. we've done tons, I think four parts of a British yeah, it was English a series. Script. Yeah. yeah. When am I coming back to Europe? I know, hopefully soon. I was there recently, but um, I couldn't I couldn't actually come visit you guys because I ran out of stamps in my passport. <laughs> or uh, pages. I didn't have any pages left in my passport. Yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't travel, which was really sad. Hopefully well, when you do, spring. come to Germany. Yes, I've never that. been, and I really want to. I know. Yeah, good we can but do yeah. a meetup. So, yeah. Yeah, if you have any other questions about British versus American English, there are a bunch of UK versus US videos on YouTube. I think there might be one more to come. I, I don't know if there are four videos. Yeah, I think there are three up. I think the fourth one's coming up soon. Um, you can comment on those videos or on yeah. this one, and you can respond. And if you guys were interested in the kind of like pronunciation stuff we touched on, Haley breaks that down a lot in these videos yeah. and they're super interesting. And I have to say, if you don't have the app yet, the app has these videos and then plus there's worksheets and yeah. interactive exercises. So you can really practice the things you've learned in the videos to make sure you, you got it. Um, yeah. Better so yeah. way to do it for sure. Good. Yay. Well, Haley, thank you so much. This was so fun. <laughs> thanks. And, uh, thanks for having me. My first live stream. Very fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to do one another one soon. Yeah, for sure. And like I sure. say at the end of most of the live streams, if you guys watching have any ideas of things that you want to see us do, write them in the comments. We love mm -hmm. to take some yeah, suggestions because we're making these videos for you guys. So we want to make sure we do what you guys want to see. So yeah. Helpful. Things. Cool. Okay. Fun things. Both. Yeah. Fun things are more fun. But okay. Indeed. Then I will say toodaloo. Do people say that? Toodaloo. Yeah. <laughs> Ta. Ta da. Tally. -ho. Toodaloo. I don't know. <laughs> tally ho means is the uh, tally ho would be the beginning. We should have oh. said tally ho at the beginning. Dang. But, Next time. Yeah. Next time. Ta. Okay. Ta ta. Then ta ta for now. <laughs> TTFN. <laughs> no, bye. Thank you, okay. everybody. Bye.